So hey guys, welcome to today's video. Today, as promised, I'm collaborating with Anthony Baston. Yeah, yeah. What's up, guys? How are you doing? Um, so we're doing a great video on um, A-level prep and how you can prepare for when you come and study the sciences here at university. All the sciences: biology, chemistry, physics, medicine. But yeah, math as well. Math, math as, as well. Yeah. Math as well. Guys, before you do that, I just like to plug my channel. <laughs> if you haven't already, go click the link. I'm sure it'll be in the description. Definitely. We're just about to release genuinely the sickest jailbreak video you've ever seen. It's insane. So if you go watch that, thank you very much. In case people haven't realised what the what this hat's about, oh, what is it about? So the hat. Sorry, the reason I'm wearing the hat is it was part of my uh, jailbreak. Um, adventure, which you can go check out on my channel, a video <laughs> dropping soon. Uh, and because this hat made it onto the Cambridge University Instagram account, which has a quarter of a million followers, it's kind of famous, so I decided to just keep wearing it. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's really cool. It reminds me of a cartoon character from another. Yeah, I don't know which yeah. one it is. Um, I know, that's, a, that's what a lot of people And also, uh, in one of the Mario games, uh, you can get the hat which helps you jump up. It's a cool habit. So I only met Anthony quite recently yeah. from the job. Well, whilst stuff. I was doing jail, bro. You went quite far. Where did you get? Yeah, we got to the Canary Islands. Yeah. So I'm um, second year uh, NASCI, as you said, mm -hmm. at Fitzwilliam College. Um, I actually kind of came here to do physics or chemistry, but I had a change of heart in first year, and that took me on a different path. So now I study um, chemistry, one of the chemistry modules, which takes on organic chemistry as well as transition metal chemistry, experimental psychology and earth science, so a very broad range. What are you looking to do afterwards? Do you have any idea at the moment? Ooh, or? <laughs> entertainment or vlogging. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Good fun. <laughs> I guess on like medicine, like for us it's just like you go into medicine. Yeah, right? fair, fair. You've got fair. some more scope. I'll but see, yeah. we'll, just, we'll discuss about this later, mm. about subjects and stuff. Before we uh, actually go to the advice, let's actually talk about the subjects we took, so then you guys can kind of relate to the advice that we'll be giving you. Yeah. So, I'll start off. I did maths, biology, chemistry, physics, and... Wait, no. Maths, biology, chemistry, physics. Four subjects. Nice. At A-level, and I got uh, A-stars in all of them. So, what subjects did you do, and how did you do them? Uh, I took chemistry, physics, maths, further maths. I took biology uh, for AS as well. I got A's in all of them at AS, and I got A-stars in the other four at the level. Arguably eight A stars worth of A level advice, I guess. Yeah, that's not bad. So you mentioned you changed subjects, obviously, yeah. in your first year, after your first year. What does Fiznatsky stand for? Because some people Ooh. might not know. Fiznatsky, Physical Natural Sciences. This, this term encapsulates the subjects that are more physical as opposed to biological. So physics, obviously, chemistry, maths, material science, and earth science falls under the bracket of both physical and biological. Well, why did you apply for natural sciences? So I decided to do natural sciences because I knew I wanted to do a very broad range of subjects. Mm. I hadn't really figured out how to specialise yet or what I wanted to specialise in. Sure. And so therefore I was like, I'll just do natural sciences. I guess because you're doing all these modules so you can sort of pick and choose what you like. Yeah. And yeah. as you said, you, you, you had a change in heart after yeah. the first year. Yeah. So Natural Sciences really gives you that scope to um, play around with subjects and see what you prefer the most. Mm. For medicine, I guess you guys already know why I like medicine and why I'm doing medicine. <laughs> so great. I won't dwell on it for too long. But um, yeah, medicine I think is a, is a great degree to do and hopefully a good career to go into as well. Yeah. Hopefully surgery, but um, you can check out other videos to find out more information. Definitely. But let's get cracking to the advice. When it comes to applying to Cambridge, of course, you have the, your minimum subject requirements. Yeah. And these are... And when you're applying, you have predicted grades. So they're important and Cambridge places a lot of weight on them because they want to get a feel for how well you cope here. They really want your scores to be as high and they want you to push yourself as much as you can mm -hmm. because this environment is testing and they want to know if you are offered a place that you can keep up, essentially. Exactly. So I guess they're trying to see if you are actually suited for your course because they want you to have the best time here at university. So by doing the sort of analysis and looking for these scores, they can see whether you are, um, you know, whether yeah. you are suited for the course. Alright, so when it comes to subjects, I took maths, biology, chemistry, physics because I thought it would give me a good grounding for medicine yeah. at university. Do you think, did you choose the subjects in that same manner or why did you choose the subjects that you took? So I chose the subjects I took because my brain's always been very numeric. I've been used to solving problems mm -hmm. and that was something I just enjoyed and I carried forward because I kept getting dopamine hits every time I solved a <laughs> problem properly. Yeah. Um, and, and by the way, dopamine makes you feel happy and makes you feel <laughs> <related>. Yeah. <laughs> Medicine! Woo! <laughs> um, 
So that's why I chose my subjects. Yeah. Um, I just, you know, also really enjoying what you're doing right. is a huge factor. So I enjoyed it. But it's also because I can apply everything I learned. Yeah. I started off being quite good at maths from a young age. Mm -hmm. And then as I moved forward throughout my school career, I realized, oh, I kind of like science as well. And I can apply principles I learn in maths to science. Mm. Hence my subject choices. Of course you chose your subjects because you knew you liked them. Mm -hmm. But do you think that your subject choice was good for natural science? Or do you think people could take different subject combinations? So the big thing about natural sciences and the shift you've seen in the last two years is that they now really want maths. Not just, not further maths. If you're doing physics, seriously consider taking further maths because it's incredibly helpful. Mm. However, if you're doing biology, you also have to really consider putting maths on your plate because they have different maths courses and they now have only a maths course for biologists and a maths course for the physical sciences. They used to have an elementary maths course right. for the biologists, but that's since been taken sure. out. So if you want to do natural sciences at Cambridge with a view to taking a biological subject, maths has to be on the table. Okay, and of course chemistry and physics because you want to do yeah. that. For medicine, I guess, chemistry, biology and maths are crucial. Um, simply because that's what medicine is based upon. Yeah. Um, all right, so when you do apply, of course, you don't want to choose the subjects that you'd like to study, that you actually enjoy in school, but also subjects that will actually increase the chance of getting in. Like Anthony said, if you want to do biological sciences here, but you don't take maths, Cambridge might think, right, well, yeah. they're going to struggle with the maths here, yeah. and therefore they might not choose you. Yeah. So really make sure that you look into your course, do your research, and then also um, you know, use that to influence your subject choice. Yeah. Can we try and think of two good things about our A-level experiences? Yeah, a great thing about my A-level experience was uh, just, just pushing myself, especially in considering applying to this place, mm -hmm. going that level beyond what the syllabus teaches. And that was very challenging and uh, fun to do, talking yeah. with my teachers, with other students about certain concepts and developing our understanding of that. I remember I did a bit of extra reading and then in the physics course last year, this topic came up. Uh, and I already knew what to do. It was great fun. <laughs> it wasn't so satisfying though. Well, I know this already. I did this two years ago before I came. Crazy. I think I really found Nayla was fun because although you go into a lot of detail, at yeah. the end of it, you end up loving the subject so yeah. much. Yeah. Like near the exams, although you're you know, hating revising for, for exams and doing past papers, yeah. you actually look at the stuff and you're like, this is actually so interesting. Yeah. I want to like, study even more into this. It's good. It's good Particularly for physics. Like, although it's hard initially, like astrophysics, I was thinking, wait, do I actually want to do this at university at one point? <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, one thing you will like about A-levels is that if you really try your best and push yourself, you'll end up loving them a lot. One thing that you didn't like about A-levels, maybe? The box ticking. Right. The box ticking. That's something we don't get so much of here. Sure. We, well, for myself... When I set out to learn my subjects here, I set out with the view that I'll learn them and then I happen to get an exam at the end of the year. Mm. For A-levels, it was unfortunately, we're pushed towards taking exams and so the learning is scripted towards that. Yeah. Whereas it's not a free, I can learn what I want kind of environment. You have to sort of end up learning mark schemes yeah. and you have like, literally the specification gives it away. Yeah. Um, last year for medicine they said, there's no actual specification. Yeah. We don't know what you need to know, just know what you've been taught in lectures. <laughs> So it's quite loose, yeah. but um, A levels were quite confined. So that's, you couldn't. That's crazy. It's pretty that crazy. Yeah. Oof, could not uh, hack it. <laughs> boy, oh boy. But then I guess that's life, and A levels yeah. are A levels are like that. But the aim is that you stay motivated and you get through them. So could you possibly think of four or five things that you gained from your A levels doing the subjects that you did um, that are really helping you now yeah. at Cambridge doing physics? So to start off with, you want to be able to think. Uh, outside of the box. Mm -hmm. This is numerical concepts as well as physical concepts. You really want to be able to visualize the information that's put in front of you mm. and see where you want to go. A huge thing that you have to do in A-levels that is set out for you, but that's a skill that you need to carry through here, is to be able to understand what are the steps you need to take when you're solving a problem. Because within your mind, you have to tell yourself that this is the first step and this is the next. Right. If you don't have that in mind, then you will never be able to get to the answer. Only you probably want to actually, to be honest, learn to write essays really <laughs> well. So yeah. doing the subject choices I did, I didn't actually write essays at all. But communication 
and being able to put your points across clearly is so crucial, not only to science, but also science communication in, in fact, everyday life. So maybe test yourself and take a subject that means you have to write essays. If I could go back to young Anthony and be like, hey bro, do you know what you need to do? You need to take biology as well and learn to write essays. Then I'd do that. There's just no scope to waffle. Yeah. You just have to be to the point, get the points across. And actually essays are written um, differently in a different structure. You can't simply just put points, you have to think of arguments yeah. and intertwine all these, all this evidence, all these uh, bits of knowledge that you have into this argument. And so doing a subject like biology where you do an essay, you can practice this. Uh, and practice makes perfect, yeah. to an extent. <laughs> Not always. <laughs> Not uh, always. But most of the time, that's the case. Any other things that you can, from maybe maths and chemistry that you gained? So, experimental uh, techniques. Right. I always threw them to the side. Yeah. You do really want to practice uh, experimental techniques. A huge thing that you learn when you come to a place like this is how to do a write-up. And write-ups are difficult to begin with, but they really teach you, again, how to communicate the points that you want to communicate. Hmm. The key things in the lab, however, are just really paying attention to everything you're doing and making a note of different techniques you use and how to use them in the future. At school, your hand is held to guide you through what you're doing in the lab, but here, it just doesn't You're happen. on your own, right? Yeah. <laughs> totally. You have a few supervisors walking around, but yeah. then a lot of the experiments, you simply have a partner, yeah. you give them the all the chemicals that you need, instructions, you and have just to do it. dive in. Whereas at school, I remember like sometimes you'd just play around, yeah. not do much. Also, Stop. just like make up the results as well. Just like, hey, Billy, did you get that one for the titration? Oh, crap, man, I wasn't looking. Okay, just write it down. What about your four or five? Oh, <laughs> that's, and there are many things. <laughs> so actually, experiments are something I'd really uh, recommend that you also... Dissections? Look. So at school, you might be dissecting frogs, rats, yeah. um, a variety of organisms. Here at Cambridge, within the first week, they, you know, between five people, you have a whole uh, cadaver. Uh, and within the first week? Literally, within the first few days, you go in there, yeah. you open a covering, and then there's a, you know, um, a dead person in front of you. That's pretty cool. And you have to dissect, for the whole year, you spend dissecting um, that same person. And so you need to be really good at, you know, improving manual, manual dexterity, yeah. be analytic about what you see, yeah. try and get hands on. But also for like biochemistry, you have so many complicated practicals. Yeah. You're using chemicals, you have to be very precise with all your, um, all your measurements and stuff. So yeah. again, in chemistry, as well as biology, it makes sure you really spend time to focus on the practicals yeah. and um, work on it. Another important thing is uh, details. So with medicine, there are a lot of fine details yeah. that you need to remember. Yeah. Um, I know when I was back at school, I, I learned more through concepts. Yes. So once I get the concept, I knew I could fill in the details in the exam. Wow. But try and also at your stage get good at memorizing stuff get good at memorizing the fine details because in medicine a lot of it's rote learning unlike Viznatsky where yeah. it's a bit more conceptual and you yeah. can sort of uh, work things out in medicine if you don't know it sometimes you literally can't answer the question a huge tip for that would be to make mind maps mm. uh, taking experimental psychology explains why this works there are so many cool studies behind it about uh, memory recall and long-term memory systems. Right. Shout out to Badley's working memory model. Anyway, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, a huge factor in memorizing stuff is organization, right? Right. I don't know about you, but when I want to memorize new details, I write a mind map. I start with one big concept and mm. then little branches that come off it and more little branches from that. And then all I have to do is remember that one large concept and everything else falls out. And that's essentially a great way of memorizing. One more thing, actually, that I'd really recommend is chemistry. So use chemistry in literally most of the modules in first and second year. It's uh, crazy how relevant it is. For example, pharmacology, biochemistry, you need to know your chemistry very well because you're learning structures, you're learning how things are being, um, you know, how OH groups are added, how things are being phosphorylated, all this left, right, center happening to different molecules. And then you need to learn the effects. What does this phosphorylation cause to a molecule? And then how does that interact differently? All of these things, if you learn chemistry really well and you understand it well, when you get here, it's much easier yeah. to understand the concepts. Yeah. Uh, also math as well, like in pharmacology, you have to use exponentials, you have to use logs, learn functions and all of that Fair. to work out how drugs are cleared, etc. So again, when you're learning your maths, learn it properly because you will definitely make use of it here at university. Again, physiology, another, another completely different topic. 
when you're looking at how air pressures change in the lungs, when you're looking at how density of air changes at different temperatures, etc. Maths is so important. Possibly. So I know for your Fiznatsky, maths is yeah, like of course. super important anyway. But maths and medicine is um, surprisingly important because you might as well make it easy for yourself. Why make things hard for yourself unnecessarily? Yeah. So should we talk about similarities and how we prepared for yeah. our science subjects? So um, similarities, I think we both find a common ground in maths and chemistry. Mm -hmm. So I think if you're thinking about a career in sciences, put those at the forefront of uh, your choices. Coming to grips with the idea of formulating concepts and figuring out what's going on and then being able to succinctly express those is what you want. Because even if you understand it quite well, you need to be able to explain it to someone else. So maybe try explaining a concept to your parents, or try explaining it to a younger sibling or an older sibling who doesn't know anything about the topic, and or, see if they get it. Yeah, I think a famous quote, I won't be able to remember who it comes from, but he says, or she says, that you never really truly understand something until you can make someone else understand it. That's so true. There's, there's some good similarities, I'd say. Differences. So I think... The way I prepared uh, was very different in terms of there was less focus on maths, yeah. uh, more on the actual content of chemistry, content of biology, and for example, biology, understanding how things are related, you know, how things are related to each other, um, as opposed to simply number crunching. Of course, for your subject, number crunching is so important, yeah. and so you did more of it. Would you yeah. agree with that, possibly? Yeah. So definitely being able to manipulate equations in maths and. In, you have to have strong integration and differentiation skills because it's just crucial for a lot of what we do. Mm. Um, being fluently numeric is how I'd say it. That's really what you want because it's a, it's a big thing. It's definitely a big thing in natural sciences. Another thing maybe, another difference between how we prepare? Another difference, I'd say um, problem solving in general. So this doesn't just fall under maths. Mm. Chemistry as well, for example understanding a mechanism and learning why or which which factors mean something is different of one side of the periodic table compared to something else those are crucial things that you need to bring together because although yes maths is mainly where you solve your problems there are huge amounts of problem solving going on in um, in chemistry as well especially this year in my course i think that's those are pretty decent differences yeah so how could we summarize our advice from this video? How could you think of some summarizing points? So, I'd summarize it firstly by saying maths. <laughs> yep. Maths is a great starting point. Mm -hmm. If you're considering a path in science, uh, be it medicine, be it natural sciences, be it biology at a different university, <clears throat> Oxford, <laughs> doing sciences in whichever route, really have maths and take that with you because it's a very useful skill to take further. I'd also say, um, again, the whole idea of memorization mm -hmm. and being able to have those ideas in your head and accessible when you need them. Probably also concept manipulation and the idea that you should be able to understand the implications and the inferences from a specific concept is a huge thing. Uh, on top of all these bits of advice that we've given you, you need to, when you're doing A-levels, think about the end goal. Yeah. It's a long procedure going through yeah. two years of all this, all these different subjects and all this different content. But think about it. The work you're putting in now will be worth it once you've, once you've achieved those grades you've been dreaming of. So take our advice, take advice from your school teachers, take advice from your friends, from your family, and really commit yourself to what you're doing now. Because if you don't do it now, then there won't be another time where you can do it. So you've got the opportunity. Might as well take it. Yeah. And we might see you before we graduate. Yeah. <laughs> Come join the YouTube gang. Woo! Yeah, Cambridge, yeah. That'd be great um, fun. So thanks so much for watching guys. I'll link Anthony's channel down below. Uh, so make sure to check it out and subscribe. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks. If you have any questions for either uh, Anthony or myself, please comment down below and we'll be more than happy to answer them. Yeah. Uh, we're actually promoting you to comment. We will yeah. take up our time yeah. to answer your questions. So definitely do so. Uh, and thank you for watching. If you haven't already, subscribe to this nope. guy. If you want all the advice on how to get to where you want to be, A-levels, GCSEs, this is your man. So if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, what are you doing? <laughs> Do yourself a favor, give that subscribe button, and get that one, two percent, and then obviously check out my channel as well. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. <laughs> it's been great fun, Yeah, and we'll see you soon. Take care, guys. Hey! Perfect. Nice. Thanks, bro. That was yours. That was great.